beautiful people. I know it's been a while, but welcome back to our safe haven. And for those of you who don't already know me, you already know my name is Belle. Well, my name is Obel, but you can call me Belle. <laughs> okay, here on this channel, I aim to inspire you by sharing my Christian life journey and how I balance lifestyle through faith, fashion, wellness, vlogs, and more. So if you're interested in all of things positive, inspirational, and spiritual growth, please subscribe so we can stay connected. Thank you guys. Well, I want to dive into a very important topic today, and I hope that it may guide you on your journey to being a stronger Christian. With that being said, the word for today is going to be focusing on how to hear God's voice. Like always, grab a cup of tea, find a cozy spot, and let's talk about three ways to help us hear God's voice. Mmm. Yeah. Lemon, ginger. Always gonna hit it. Anyway, let's get right to it. I know life can get incredibly busy and noisy, right? With all of the hustle and bustle, it can be challenging to actually hear that still small voice of God amidst the chaos. That's why the first way to hear God's voice is by cultivating a heart of stillness through prayer and meditation. In Psalms 46 verse 10, it says, be still and know that I am God. This verse is a gentle reminder that sometimes we need to quiet our minds and create a peaceful space to truly connect with him. So how do we do this? First, we need to set aside dedicated time. Just like you schedule important meetings or dates, schedule time to be alone with God. It doesn't have to even be hours. Even 15 to 30 minutes a day can actually make a significant difference. Another way is create a peaceful environment. Find a quiet and comfortable spot where you won't be easily distracted. Light a candle, play some soft instrumental, you know, worship music, which is my favorite, or simply sit in silence. Whatever helps you focus. Another way is to practice deep breathing. Before you start praying, take a few deep breaths to calm your mind and body. Inhale God's peace and exhale any stress or anxiety you might be holding on to. I know this actually works a lot for me. Another thing is to engage in conversational prayer. Prayer is a conversation with God. And often we focus on talking to him, telling him our problems, uh, desires and needs, but we always forget to listen or we sometimes forget to listen. Imagine if you had a friend who only ever spoke and never listened. It would feel like a real conversation, right? Exactly. So the same goes for our relationship with God. We need to take time to pause and actually listen to him. In 1 King 19, verse 11 through 12, Elijah experiences God's voice, not in the wind, earthquake, or fire, but in a gentle whisper. This illustrates that God's voice often comes in subtle ways, and we need to be still and attentive to perceive it. Let me give you a little person. I remember a time when I was feeling really overwhelmed with decisions about my purpose in life, and... I decided to take some time each morning to sit quietly before God, pouring out my heart, and then just listen. It wasn't immediate because sometimes we want this answer to be immediate. But over time, I began to feel a peaceful assurance and clarity about the steps that I needed to take. That clarity, I promise you, was God's voice guiding me through my stillness and willingness to listen. I want you to take some action steps here. This week or whenever, try setting aside a specific time each day so you can practice stillness before God. Journal any thoughts, feelings, or impressions that come to you during this time. Some tips. After your prayers, sit in silence for a few minutes. Don't rush off to the next thing like we know we got plenty of things to do but give God the space to speak to your heart. You can ask him questions like, Lord, 
what do you want me to learn from this situation? Or God, how can I serve you today? And then simply wait. Sometimes you may feel a gentle nudge, hear a whisper in your spirit, or have a sense of peace and clarity. You might be very surprised at how clearly you begin to discern his guidance. The second way to hear God's voice is by engaging deeply with the word of God, the Bible. The scriptures are God's spoken word to us. And through them, he actually reveals his character, his promises, and his guidance for our lives. In 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 through 17, or 16 and 17, it says, All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. This emphasizes that the Bible is a living document through which God communicates directly with us. So how can we engage more deeply with scripture? Consistent reading, okay? Set aside time daily to read and reflect on the word. If you don't like to read, like some of us don't, I get it. You can actually listen to the Bible daily. I use the Bible app to do that every single day. Whether it's like five minutes in the morning or 30 minutes in the evening, the key is consistency. Consistency, okay? Another way is study. Don't just read. Go beyond just reading. Study the passages. Look into the context, the audience, and the purpose behind that particular scripture. Use study guides or join a Bible study group to deepen your understanding. I have a great Bible study group that I participate in, okay? Meditate on the word. Choose a verse that speaks to you and meditate on it throughout the day. Think about how it applies to your life and what God might be telling you through that verse. Another thing to do is to memorize scriptures. I know each of you here have to memorize at least one scripture. Hidden God's words in our heart equips you to actually recall his promise and guidance whenever you need them. Psalms 119.11 says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. And remember, after you memorize scriptures, I need you to apply the word. Ask yourself, how can I apply what you've read to your daily life? James 1 verse 22 reminds us, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Application transform knowledge into lived experience. Like I mentioned earlier from my previous experience, when I struggle with anxiety and uncertainty about the future, diving into scriptures like Jeremiah 29 verse 11, which we all know, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Those words brought immense comfort and assurance in, um, to me. It felt as though God was actually speaking directly to my situation, calming my fears and renewing my hope. Um, one action step that I want you to take is... Learn to just pick up a book from the Bible. Pick a book from the Bible that you feel like you're drawn to and commit to actually studying it over the next month. Take notes, reflect on its teaching, and pray for understanding and revelation as you read. And watch how God uses his word to speak into your life situation. Lastly, one of the most powerful ways to speak to hear God is through the Holy Spirit. When Jesus ascended to heaven, he promised the gift of the Holy Spirit to actually guide, comfort, and teach us. In John 14, verse 26, Jesus says, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. This means that the Holy Spirit is actively working within us, communicating God's will and direction. So that means we have to listen to it, right? The Holy Spirit lives in us as believers, 
guiding us, reminding us of God's truth and helping us understand his voice. When you have a close relationship with the Holy Spirit, he can prompt you in your daily life, whether it's through thoughts, um, impressions, or your coworker at work that just dropped the gem with you, or even dreams. Okay. Now, here are some ways to be more attentive to the Holy Spirit. We need to learn how to cultivate sensitivity. Okay. Spend time in worship and prayer, asking God to make you more sensitive to the Holy Spirit's leading. The more time you actually spend in God's presence, the more attuned you actually become. Another way is to pay attention to inner nudges. Sometimes the Holy Spirit communicates through gentle nudges and convictions in our hearts. It could be a sudden thought, a feeling, or like I mentioned earlier, like somebody, like a coworker who drops something, you know, or a patient or wh whomever. But remember, the idea has to align with God's word and character. That is very important. And I would say another way is to test the spirit. First John 4 verse 1 advises us, dear friends, do not believe in every spirit, but test the spirit to see whether they are from God. Ensure that what you perceive align with scriptures and brings peace rather than confusion. One key here is to be spiritually discerning. Very important. Not every voice or thought is actually from God, but the Holy Spirit actually help us distinguish between what is from him and what is not. The more we cultivate our relationship with the Holy Spirit, the more familiar we actually become with God's voice. And in John 10, verse 27, Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And lastly, guys, obey promptings quickly. When you sense the Holy Spirit leading you to do something, you better respond as soon as possible, my friend. As soon as possible, because delayed obedience can sometimes lead to missed opportunities to experience God's work in and through, through us or through you. One thing God doesn't like is disobedience. Look at what he did to Jonah. Okay, you get the point. <laughs> okay, and another thing is to seek confirmation. If you are unsure, seek confirmation through prayer, scripture, and counsel from mature believers. I repeat, mature believers believers. Just be attentive because God often confirms his messages in multiple ways. Let me share another experience with you. Um, once I felt a strong urge to reach out to like a friend I hadn't spoken to in years or in, in some months. And it was a so random out of the blue, but the feeling was so persistent. I decided to obey that prompting and give her a text. And it turns out that she was actually going through something really hard and desperately needed someone to reach out. So that conversation obviously reignited our friendship, but it allowed me to kind of support her through her struggles. And honestly, guys, I truly believe, I truly believe that what I truly believe that was the Holy Spirit actually guiding me to be there for her in that moment. I want to leave you with some tips before making decisions or facing challenges take a moment to actually ask the Holy Spirit for guidance. Ask him to fill you with wisdom and peace. Then be sensitive to the gentle leading he provides. Sometime, again, it's inner conviction, a sense of peace, or even a strong feeling of caution that tells you God is speaking. So there you have it. Three ways to help us hear God's voice. Say it with me, cultivating a heart of stillness through prayer med and meditation, I guess, cultivating a heart of stillness through prayer and meditation. I'm already forgetting. <laughs> Engaging deeply with the word of God and being attentive to the Holy Spirit's prompting. Remember, hearing God isn't about you know, striving or stressing. It's really about creating a lifestyle that's open to his voice. And over time, guys, it's, it's, it, it could seems really hard, but over time, 
you'll become more familiar with how he speaks to you personally. And I'm going to leave you with Matthew 7, verse 7. Encourage us, it encourages us to ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. So let's continue to seek, listen, and obey his voice in our daily lives. Thank you for watching yet another of my Christian Girl Test Talks. If you found this video inspiring, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for more, and share it with someone who needs to hear this. Stay blessed and remember, guys, you are loved beyond measures by your Heavenly Father. Bye!